So, guys, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to be able to solve this, um, what we can do is you guys can see this is now in an if-then format, right? If then, if you have this equation, then x equals 15, right? So this is something we can either be able to prove or disprove. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a proof. And when creating a proof in this class, what we're going to use is what we call a two-column proof. So you're going to have two columns. On top of those columns, we're going to have a header. And the first one's going to be a statement, and then a reason for making that statement. OK, so we're going to have a statement, and then a reason. So the first statement is always nice to go and take a look at, because our first statements are going to be, what is provided to us? So what's been provided to us is 1 fifth x plus 3 equals 2x minus 24. And the reason we got that is because it was provided to us. So we call it given. All right. So whenever you're given something that I'm asking you to prove, you're always going to want to take all the information that they give to you and write it down to say, this information has been given. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on some steps to solve this. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I hate dealing with fractions. So if I have a fraction, does anybody know how I can get rid of that fraction? Anybody else? If I have the 5 in the denominator, does anybody know how I can get rid of that? Yeah, Shane? Multiply 5 on both sides. Multiply 5 on both sides, exactly. So if I multiply by 5 on both sides, and when I multiply an equation on both sides, does anybody know what we call, call multiplying by 5 on both sides? Should have talked about a little bit in geometry. Anybody? Obviously, I'll have to ask David, because obviously he wouldn't remember, right? No. OK. So Colin, when we would multiply on both sides, what we call this is the multiplication property of equality. Does anybody remember hearing that ever? Multiplication property of equality. And what that tells you, if you multiply on one side, you have to multiply on the other side, other side right? So I don't, you guys don't have to say the whole thing, but you do have to say the multiplication property. All right? So then you multiply on both sides. And then what we can do is simplify this into x plus 15 equals 10x minus 5 times 24, 4 would be 120. All right. So the next property is once we evaluate that, you know, actually provide, do our math, when I multiply that 5 across there, that's going to become my substitution property because we have our equations are equal to each other on both sides. All right. So now the next thing we need to do is, because remember 5 times 1 fifth, that's just going to be 1. So that's where I get the x. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously get our variable to the same side. Correct? And you get the variables to the same side. So I can either get the x's on the left side or the x's on the right side. So to do that, I'll just subtract an x on both sides. So therefore, I have 15 equals 9x. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. x plus 15 equals 10x minus 120. Now, if I subtract an x on both sides, that's going to be what, Lauren? What would you say if I subtract on both sides, we call that which property? Well, if we multiply on both sides, we call that the multiplication property. So subtracting on both sides, we call that the? Subtraction. subtraction. And it's actually the subtraction property of equality. But I'll let you guys just go with Subtraction. Subtraction property. So now I have 15 equals 9x minus 120. And therefore, that's again going to be the substitution. Uh, 10x minus x. Just have a 1 in front of the x? Yep, it's just like having a 1 in front of the x. Um, so now I need to get my, now I need to get the 10 over here. So what I can do is um, add 120 to both sides. So 15 equals 9x minus 120. So now I'll add 120 to both sides. 
So therefore, I have 1. All right, well, so if I'm adding on both sides, we'll call that the addition property. And when adding 120, you now get 135 equals 9x, which is, again, now substitution. Okay, and then the last thing, if you let me in, is now to solve for this, I now need to divide by 9x. So when we divide by 9x, we call that the division property. <coughs> It is. And then finally, I'm going to say x is going to equal, how many times does 9 go into 135? Well, 9 goes into 90 times, 10. 135 minus 90 is 45. 9 goes into 45 five times. So then 5 plus 10 is going to be 15. So now you could say x equals 15. There could be the reflexive property on this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now because I'm running out of space. So x equals 15 by substitution. And then we'll include a box at the end. Okay? And all the boxes really representing is that now my proof is complete.